and welcome to Good Games Spawn Point, the show for younger gamers by gamers. I'm Hex. And I'm Bajo. I'm Darren. Uh, and I'm Dan. And Santa's already been here. Look at these presents. Actually, Bajo, those are my Christmas gifts for you and Hex, as it's our last show of the year and, well, you know, well, let's get opening. Well, hang on, Bajo. I think we should wait a sec. Why would we wait? Presents. Well, I just think we should wait till the end of the show. I think it'll be better if we do that. We don't have presents for Darren or Derp yet. Oh, OK. Well, I guess we should. Well, I, I love waiting. So, yeah, let's wait and make it all that better. But well, which games are we going to review while we do all this tedious waiting? We've got Lego Harry Potter years five to seven. And the latest Mario Kart number seven. Oh, and Mario again, this time with Sonic in Sonic and Mario at the London Olympic Games. Hmm. Well, before all that, we better clear these presents out of the way so we can review the adventures of Tintin. Give us a hand, Derp. Sure thing, Bajo. All right, well, The Adventures of Tin Tin, The Secrets of the Unicorn, the game, has to be the longest title for a game this year. But it's also based on the new Tintin movie, which is coming out here in Christmas, even though Europe have it already. Now, for those of you who don't know that much about Tintin, Darren, why don't you explain to the Spawnlings a little bit about him? Tintin is a journalist who gets involved in all sorts of adventures, a bit like Indiana Jones. Tintin began as a comic strip created by the Belgian artist Georges Remy, who wrote under the pen name Herge. Since 1929, Tintin has become one of the most popular European comic strips of all time. Hmm. Well, the game is a platformer for the most part, kind of like Mario. It doesn't always stick with that view, though. It occasionally jumps into various mini-games to mix things up. You'll be outrunning a flood of water, then flying through a storm, then riding a motorbike in the desert. What did you think of those bits, Bajo? To be honest, I thought all the mini-games just distracted from the best part about this game, which is the platforming, especially those terrible sword fights. I mean, they were so easy, even a pirate's parrot could have completed them. Yeah, I agree. The platforming is good, and they really should have just focused on that a lot more. Like any good platformer, the game introduces new tools and environments with each level. My favourite was the underwater scooter section. Oh, me too. And normally I don't like underwater levels, but they were fun. The core platforming has two main elements. Simple environmental puzzles and combat with the criminals that fill each level. I especially like the flaming torch sections towards the very end, as you had to think about how to use them. It made me feel quite clever. A new experience? Yeah. Wait, no. I think this game actually overall is really easy. I only got knocked out twice. It's <clears throat> one more time than me. Oh. I did like the visual style of the game, though. It's very much in the theme of the comics. And if you haven't seen the comics, they're worth checking out. Pretty good. Yeah, it's really beautiful, quite artistic in the way it's been drawn, almost like a watercolour painting. I thought the music was a real standout, too, especially those creepy bits that played in the background of those co-op sections. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes, the co-op. There are a couple of hours of co-op play here where you share the same screen. It's not tied to the film, though. It's set in a dream world that you visit when Captain Haddock, Tintin's friend, gets knocked on the head. The co-op sections are much harder than the single player, so you might want to get a more experienced gamer to help you out with those bits. But we should wrap this up. What's your final verdict, Hex? Well, isn't it great to see a movie tie-in game that isn't, well, terror bad? I think Tintin fans will be really impressed with this. I'm giving it seven and a half out of ten rubber chickens, with a little bit more if you're a big fan of Tintin. Hmm. Yeah, I really enjoyed the platforming, but I felt that everything else, the co-op and all those mini games, were just tacked on, and they weren't really, they didn't really have enough time put into them to make them fun. So I'm going to give it seven out of ten rubber chickens. Well, I'm off to read the news, guys. Okay. Christmas news. You look fantastic, Darren. You look fabulous. Oh, your bow tie is wonderful, Barjo. Thanks very much. You know what it's made out of? Tell me. It's made out of space dust. Everything's made out of space dust. Hex here with a special Christmas edition of the Spawn Point News. Warner Brothers has begun production on a feature-length Lego film. The film will mostly be animated with Australian-based visual effects company Animal Logic creating the graphics. Animal Logic is best known for its work on the animated films Happy Feet and Legend of the Guardians The Owls of Gahul. Lego is set to hit the big screen in 2014. A resourceful gamer in the US has managed to enlist Logan Cunningham, the memorable voice actor from indie game Bastion, to narrate his very own wedding. Gamer Jay Greshner sent an email to Supergiant Games and was surprised to find that the developer was more than happy to cooperate, arranging for the narrator to record a number of lines that were then played during the ceremony. Everyone gets up as the bride-to-be makes her way down the aisle. Oh, she's a sight. Right, back to the studio. 
Yes, I've got a tailor on Neptune. He specialises. Mm. All right, guys, what's next? Ah, Mario and Sonic at the London Olympic Games 2012. The 2012 Summer Games won't be the first modern Olympic Games to take place in London. The event was also held there in 1908 and 1948. It is, however, the first time that Mario the Plumber, Sonic the Hedgehog and all their myriad friends and foes have come together in the spirit of friendly competition in England's historic capital city. And there are plenty of ways for these characters to compete. Fencing, volleyball. Rhythmic gymnastics, equestrian. Equestrian what? You know, equestrian. Horses. <laughs> anyway, I suppose it's a fine enough example of the play style. Basically, you move and guide the Wii remote around to guide your horse over a series of obstacles. All of the mini games are quite straightforward and use some combination of button presses and motion sensing. The events all work fairly well and they all have an element of depth too. There's always some little trick that you can do to squeeze out a higher score. On top of the regular events, there are dream events, which are inspired by Olympic sports. These bizarre contests are obviously thrown in to add a bit more variety to the game. For instance, the dream version of Equestrian has up to four players on horses towing a cart of Yoshi eggs through a surreal gauntlet. Time your steering and jumps poorly and you'll lose your eggs over the side. I could only save one little egg. The roster includes 20 characters, with each assigned a class based on their strengths and weaknesses. Sonic falls into the speed class, obviously, while Mario is more of an all-rounder. Beyond their unique stats for speed, stamina and so forth, each character also has their own graphical flourishes. Sonic Speed! They even included a robot! Metal Sonic doesn't say much, but he's got attitude to spare. Metal Sonic! All the regular and dream events are designed to be played in quick bursts. You know, you jump in with some friends and have a quick go. But for longer sessions, they've included the London party mode. This might be fun for younger spawnlings, but I found it a bit too simplistic, unbalanced and a bit confusing. And time consuming. And also you could fill an imaginary album with virtual stickers. I mean, it just wasn't my thing. It's sort of like a poor man's Mario party. Mm. It's confusing, but at least it worked properly. The biggest challenge in this game was getting four controllers synced up on the same Wii console. What a nightmare. Agreed. <laughs> Final thoughts? Well, I think it's bright, it's colourful, it knows what it wants to be. And as far as minigame compilations go, it's up there, it's better than most. So you won't want to run a marathon with this game, but you might enjoy a brief sprint. I'm going to give it 7.5 out of 10 rubber chickens. I loved how they tried to build up a really rich world around the game. They just got all those little quirks, like the Mushroom Kingdom flag wavers, the costumes, the power-ups, and every little detail down to Waluigi's jagged moustache. It's still a minigame compilation, but I I think it's one of the best, so I'm giving it 7 out of 10 rubber chickens. Right, well, our next review is... <coughs> <coughs> Aren't you forgetting something? The rundown clearly states the blooper reel is next in the transmission. Well, you know, Darren, I don't think we'll have time. We have so many games to review. Negative. Should... My audience attitude sensor detects that the spoilings would like to see your many mistakes. <sighs> OK, well, here's us stuffing up. Affirmative. OK, Hex, it's Ask Good Time again, once more. Again, hit us up with the first question. Ask a good time. <laughs> Costume alternatives. So I'm going to get... I'm going to get... Shall I get one? Ah, I see some sportlings have submitted screenshots for... from... <sighs> From Gerb. So, what's your conclusion, Bajo? I think. I see some spot. So, we are rolling. This is all happening. Okay. P.S. First comes Hex, second comes Bajo, and then comes Darren with the boring hand. <laughs> I'm beginning into I'll owling. Right now, owling. Where you go like this? Owling. Owling. <laughs> Owling's better. That's cooler. <laughs> I can't help it if you're slow, Dad. <laughs> oh my god, Dad! Let me read. Now remember, make sure you do your business outside. You don't have to do <laughs> Sorry, here we go. I meant to do that. <laughs> 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 Right, well now it's time to power up our power slides because it's Mario Kart 7. Mm, vroom, 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 vroom. 
The Mario Kart series began in 1992 on the SNES, and it's now in its seventh edition. The latest game is the first kart title for the 3DS, and has 16 new tracks, coupled with 16 old tracks from previous games. The tracks include new features like gliding and the ability to drive underwater. <laughs> the new tracks were really fun, Dare, and I especially liked that some of the tracks didn't just have your standard three laps, but they had three sections in a larger track. I mean, at first it confused me a little bit, but I think it actually takes away some of the repetition that's in other Mario Kart games. Another thing I liked about the new tracks is that there are more ways to get to the end now, so there's heaps of secrets and shortcuts to unlock. How did you like the gliding, Hex? I thought it was fun, but I'm not sure how much it actually helps the racing. I mean, sometimes I felt like I was actually going slower than the guys on the ground. Yeah, it's a challenge to work out that perfect distance to glide on each track, but I do like how the older maps have been updated with gliding as well. There are three new power-ups in the game. The Fire Flower gives you the ability to shoot fireballs. The Super Leaf gives you a raccoon tail, which you can use to swipe at carts when they come too close. And the Lucky Seven, which gives you seven different power-ups for you to cycle through. With the Lucky Seven, I actually think it's more exciting seeing the different power-ups spinning around you than it is actually using them. Yeah, and you don't really have enough time to use all seven of them strategically and properly before you hit the next power-up. However, there is one power-up they've really changed for the better in this game, and that's the ink blots. They really affect your ability to see the tracks. There's a new first-person mode where you steer the cart using the 3DS's gyroscopic sensors. It's great seeing crashes from a close first-person viewpoint. Coins also make a return in Mario Kart 7, helping you to boost speed during a race and unlock vehicle customizations. There's a multitude of options to customize your vehicle from various chassis, wheels and gliders. These choices can affect the speed and handling of your cart. This new addition makes Mario feel like even more of a proper racing game. There's not an overwhelming amount of customization options, but I did spend a lot of time in there trying to make the perfect cart. The game looks great, and the colours really pop. I also found the 3D was excellent. It enhances the experience here, and I think they're really starting to get that 3D right now. It's, it's good for judging the distances on the tracks. Hex, I actually think this is a better looking game than Mario Kart on Wii. Yeah, it does look good, doesn't it? And the music is just fantastic too, with a good mix of old and new Nintendo tracks worked in there. There are also a few new characters to unlock. My favourite is Metal Mario! Is that because he's made of metal? A photo! Uh, we didn't get the chance to try out the multiplayer, but there is going to be up to eight player local, online matchups, and download play as well. Nintendo are very good at recycling games like this. You know, they'll take a classic and they'll remaster it and tweak it and polish it for a new generation of gamers. And while, while I think that is a good thing, it's great to be playing great games that look a bit better and feel a bit better with new features, a part of me is starting to resent that a little bit, you know? Like, I want something new, I don't want just a rehash of an older game. Yeah. Final thoughts? Well, the perpetual comeback system here is the best in the boot business and it always keeps you in the race and it certainly gets that heart pumping when you're crossing the finish line but you, you just get pipped just before it. I found myself screaming at the console in a good way on the bus which looks a bit weird. <laughs> I'm giving it 9 out of 10 rubber chickens. It's an excellent game. Yeah, it's a fantastic addition to the Mario Kart franchise. I'm giving it 8.5 out of 10. Well, the inbox is overflowing. Time for Santa's little helpers to get to the Ask Good Game desk. Oh, laser beam, oh, laser beam. Hex, I'm on the robot gift guide and I just can't find anything that Darren would like. He's already got all of these lasers. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, maybe we should think about it for a while first and just answer some questions. Mm -hmm. Let's start with this one from Oscar in Brisbane, Queensland. I'm ordering those hydraulic boots. For you or for Darren? Let's go. On Skylanders, is there a cheat to finish the whole game? Because trying to get to each source is boring. P.S. Baja and Hex are awesome. Darren is a noob. Well, Oscar, there's an old saying that says sometimes what happens on the journey is more important than getting to the destination. What I mean is there's not much point in playing a game just to cheat and skip to the end. It kind of messes out on the best part, the, the actual game. Yeah, and if you're finding it that boring, then I'd suggest either trading it in for something else or asking a friend to swap a game with you for a while. But let's move on to this one from Heg x 64 in Minecraft, South Australia. The X is for extreme. I think that your segment is wasted on stuff that could be answered by a simple Google search, like how to complete a level on a game, or what is something rather. 
And can I ask the Spawnlings to use correct spelling by looking words up in the dictionary? I am sick of you saying stuff like Magor for major and answer for answer. And I heard that E3 is not open for the public. Is this true? And if so, when will it be in Australia? P.S. Can you get the conferences broadcasted on ABC3 for us to watch? Well, Hank, to answer your question, I'm sure we could find all that information with just a simple internet search. Bajo? Where's your Christmas spirit? The information you heard about E3 is right. It's not open to the public, and I doubt very much that we'll ever see it in Australia. Mm. E3 has always been in Los Angeles in America. As for it being broadcast on ABC3, well, we will make an episode of Spawn Point from there next year. Well, moving right along to this one from... Brody in Melbourne, Victoria. Hey guys, do you know of any free games like Trials 2 available on iPod slash iPhone? P.S. I love your show. Well, thanks, Brody. And yes, there are a few free games like Trials out there for iOS. There's MX Mayhem, Stick Stunt Biker and Bike M Turbo, all of which have demo versions which you can download and try for free. But if you do have a couple of dollars to spare, you should definitely check out Bike Baron. It's got nice 3D graphics and plays great. It's definitely up there. It's one of the best games I've played on iOS. Yeah. All right, well, let's move right along to this one from Casey in South Adelaide, South Aust Adelaide, South Australia. Adelaide in South Australia. That's what I meant. Hi guys, is there any news of a sequel to Mario Kart Wii coming out soon? If not, do you know what the next Mario game to be released on the Wii will be? Thanks, Casey. Smiley. Well, Casey, we don't know for sure, but we suspect there might not be any more Mario games coming out for the Wii. Well, except Mario and Sonic at the London Olympics. Well, yes, but just Mario games? I don't know. See, the new Ninty console, the Wii U, is coming out next year, and there's been no more mention of any Mario games coming out for the Wii, so my hunch is that the next one will be a Wii U exclusive. I think you might be right. Of course, we've just reviewed Mario Kart 7 on 3DS, and that's technically the sequel to Mario Kart Wii. But moving on to this one now from Mitch. But my friends call me Princess Hamish Tedrick. It's an interesting name. In the place with people in it, Victoria. What are you doing? Do you have any candy cane sex? Oh, can I have that one? Dear GGSP, love the show. I have seen every ep since number one. My question is, can you get a game that is like Ratchet and Clank up your arsenal on PS3? Because that was my favorite game of all time. I say was because I sold my PS2 for a Wii. Please answer my question or else I will stop watching the show. Not. Thanks, see ya. Well, Princess, there's not one, not two, but three proper Ratchet and Clank games on PS3. There's Tools of Destruction, Quest for Booty, and A Crack in Time, all of which are great games. Yeah, and there's also Ratchet and Clank All for One, which plays differently from those other titles since it's much more focused on co-op. All these games are for the PS3, though, and not for the Wii. Hmm, well, moving on to this one from Matthew in Coffs Harbour, South New South Wales. Do you like candy canes? What? Do you like them? I think we should share them, to be honest, so you should just stop hogging them all. Hi, Good Game SP. Today I'm asking you for help. I've got an Xbox 360 Connect, and every time I put Xbox 360 games in it, it starts to hum, so what do I do? Please help me. Hmm. Well, Matthew, good news. You don't need to worry about that. The humming is just the. Suddenly just, just remembered I hate them. Hey, candy canes. You don't need to worry about that because that humming is just a disc spinning in the Xbox and it's perfectly normal. But if the humming is annoying you, then installing the game to the hard drive will actually stop it. Yeah. And to install a game to the hard drive, simply put the disc in your Xbox, then go to the game library on your dashboard and then select the game. You'll find the option to install it right there. Well, next we have this one from Fiona in Perth, Western Australia. Hi, good game. My brother says Tails in Sonic is a boy. Is she slash he? I think Tails is a girl. Please reply. Thanks. Well, sorry to say, Fiona, but your brother is right. Tails is a boy. We know that because his full name is Miles Tails Prowler, and Miles is a boy's name, typically. Also, there was that 90s Sonic cartoon series, and Tails was definitely a boy in that. Mm. Right, well, I think we've got time for one more question, so let's have a look. Ah, I have this one from Mason in Holy Dooly Balooly Land. Western Australia. I've never heard of that place. I have never been there either. <laughs> but I did do a thesis on why that place is so hooly bully. Please, Mrs. Bajo and Mr. Hex. I've heard rumours of a dragon of some sweet sort in Minecraft when the full version is released. May you tell me more about this vile creature? And also, what are your real names? Bajo, you look like a Steve. And Hex, no idea. 
Well, good guess, Mason, because my name is actually Stephen. And my real name is Stephanie. Hmm? Yeah, but no one really calls me that except my mum. Hmm. Our names are kind of similar, that's a bit weird. A little bit. Of course, my middle name is Robongulus. <laughs> but I don't tell people that because it's embarrassing. But those dragons you speak of are the Ender Dragons, which are basically the final boss of the game. And to find one, you'll need to go to the End Realm. But to get there, you'll have to find and activate an End Portal in a stronghold, which is a bit of a tricky process. But once you find one and activate it, you'll be whisked away and find yourself face to face with a dragon. They're really tough to kill, but if you can slay it, then you'll have finished Minecraft and you'll get to see the end credits. But of course, it's not really the end because Minecraft never ends. You'll just respawn at your base once the credits are over and can continue mining and crafting the world to your heart's content. Mm, and now that Minecraft is finally released, I think we'll need to do some work on our world over the summer and yeah. then do a proper review of it next year, don't you yeah. think, Badge? Yeah, what can we Whoa, I just had the best idea for a present. Is it pants? Candy cane pants? Say that again. What was it? That's a fantastic idea. <laughs> I thought heard so. it much better the second time I High thought five. you said candy cane pants. <laughs> yes, well, Spawning, the Ask Good Game inbox is officially closed for the year and we'll open it again once we come back in 2012. Mm, yeah, thanks for your questions. It's been great trying to answer them. Now we better go get this Prezi sorted. Hey. Nice high five. Thanks. You've come such a long way. Oh, that means a lot. Thank you yeah, very much. No worries. <laughs> come on. Christmas. Birthdays are distributed evenly mm. throughout the year, oh. but video game releases are not. Why is it so? Simple. Christmas. Because this annual festival is when we receive expensive gifts, game companies bunch up their releases just before Christmas to cash in. This creates problems. The rest of the year becomes a digital drought and the games that are released at Christmas are often rushed just so they can catch a ride on Santa's sleigh. And beware, naughty children can expect to get nothing at all. Or worse, mini game collections. This Christmas, may all your games be good ones. Oh, I think he's gonna love it. <coughs> Right, well, what's next? Two of my favourite things, Barjo. Batman and Kittens? N no, Lego and Harry Potter. Here's five to seven. This Lego series of video games has sold over 50 million copies since it launched with Lego Star Wars in April 2005. This makes it one of the most popular video game series of all time. And for good reason. Traveller's Tales, the creator of this series, have perfected the art of taking the world's favourite film franchises, be it Star Wars, Indiana Jones or Pirates of the Caribbean, and rebuilding them brick by brick in the Lego universe. This time they've turned their attention to the last four Harry Potter films, following all the major events from the Order of the Phoenix right through to part two of the Deathly Hallows. The last film was rated M in Australia as it contained fantasy themes and violence. However, this Lego game is rated G, making it suitable for children of all ages, even the big ones like Barger. Yes, that film gave me quite a few frights, Darren. So it's good to see that they've still managed to keep all those pivotal moments from the films in this game, but they've just done it in a way that's humorous or a caricature of the events that occurred. <laughs> For those of you familiar with LEGO games, then you won't be too surprised at the gameplay here. There's no major changes, instead they just focus on, you know, doing what LEGO games do best, which is guiding the player through a series of levels packed full of puzzles with minimal combat along the way. Returning from the last LEGO Harry Potter game is a selectable spell wheel. By holding down the spell button, players can select specific spells, each of which can be used in different ways to solve puzzles. This wheel also contains the pet system, which is used to access parts of the levels that are too small for the humans. It's a nice mix of puzzle solving and exploration, although I did find the puzzles particularly frustrating. Not because they were clever hard, it's just that I'd always miss that piece I needed to solve the puzzle. Yeah, I remember this problem from the first game, so I'm surprised to see it return. Uh, my solution was easy though, I just, you know, zap everything with my magic wand and eventually the piece would turn up. Yeah, that's a great strategy. And <laughs> I think this is easily the best LEGO Harry Potter game so far, especially all those beautiful locations. The first time you go shopping in Diagon Alley, or the first time when you walk down those halls of Hogwarts, it's amazing for Harry Potter fans. The game also includes several new locations that were not featured in the first LEGO Harry Potter game, including Gimald Place, the Ministry of Magic, and Godric's Hollow. 
like all LEGO games, this is best played in co-op with that amazing split screen. And I know we've talked about this before, but it's just so brilliant the way the screen splits when you move away from each other and then seamlessly rejoins when you return. I, just, I really wish more games would do this. Yeah, no game does it better, really, does it? I, I also think that there are more of those uh, co-op puzzles here which are just better with two people. But the AI will help you out if you don't have a friend to play with. I have to say, this might actually be the best LEGO game to date. I mean, the graphics and music are just stunning, and that slightly harder difficulty means you won't just breeze through it. But I really want to open my presents, so we should wrap this up. There's something about the magic of the LEGO universe and the magic of the Harry Potter universe that just goes together so well. Like Batman and Kittens, it's a match made in heaven, and I'm giving it 9 out of 10 rubber chickens. Well, I think this will suit Harry fans, both young and old, so I'm giving it a whopping 9 out of 10 as well. Just make sure you've got a friend to help you with those tricky bits. Hmm. All right, Darren, presents, can we open them now? Can we? Can we? Affirmative! That brings us to the end of our very last episode of the year. And what a year it's been. So much fun. Indeed. But we shall return next year in early February for a whole another 12 months of gaming goodness. Now, Darren, presents. Can we open them? Affirmative! Yay! <laughs> Um, thanks, Darren. What is it? It's a mixtape. Oh. Go on. Give it a whirl. And I need you now tonight. And I need you more than ever. And if you only hold me tight, we'll be holding on forever. Wow, thanks, Darren. Thanks, Darren. You are very welcome. Oh, and there's another track on side B. Really? Wow, we might actually save that one until later. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, much later. Oh, OK. Darren, we've actually got a present for you, too. Uh, Santa, I, I mean, Goose, could you bring in Derp and Darren's present, please? Oh, oh, oh hey, guys, there we go. Oh, 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 oh. I'll help you out, Darren. Can I open it for you, Derp? Oh! It's like we're a real family. Darren, we are a real family. Aww. Aww. <laughs> That's enough. Before we go, we'd like to say a huge thank you to all the developers for making the games we've played this past year, and to everyone who works behind the scenes in the ABC for helping us make the show. And next week, we have an extravaganza hour-long episode on our adult good game show, Tuesday at 8.30pm on ABC2. But you must check with your parents because we will have mature content in there, such as The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword and Halo Anniversary. We'll also be announcing the winner to our competition to win the life-size Batman. <gasps> Sounds great. Can I be in that show too? Oh, yeah, all right, Darren. <laughs> <laughs> well, our biggest thanks goes to you for watching. Thank you so much and for sending in so many questions and emails that we haven't been able to answer them all, but we have enjoyed reading them very much. Absolutely. We have so much fun making Spawn Point and we love making the show for you. Mm. But I think we're out of time for the year. Yes. Till next time, gamers, may your stockings be filled with good games. Hex out. Bajo out. Darren out. Goose out. Dip out. Bye. 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 Bye.